Residents Association. Uh, David Hawke, is it? Yep. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Well, oh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present this submission. We really do appreciate the effort taken by Council to listen to the views of our community and the wider community as well. So I'm putting forward this submission. Um, we're very much aware of the Council's precarious financial situation, but we think a good place to start in these circumstances is a quote I came across the other day from a recent publication on smart growth from the American City and County Management Association. And it goes along the lines. Successful communities have one thing in common, a vision of where they want to go and what things they value in their community. And their, va and sorry, and their plans for development reflect these values. Horsell Residents Association believes emphatically in the role of strong local communities in the health and happiness of a city. So our submission focuses on areas in the draft annual plan relating to strengthening communities that we think need revisiting. In this submission, this oral presentation, I'm going to focus on two of these. Um, community facilities, especially for young people, and the pushing out of the timetable for cycleway completion. We are, obviously enough, focusing on Horsewell, but we suspect that many other rapidly growing areas around Christchurch will present similar stories to ours. We'll go to the youth facilities first. As we state in our written submission, we brought this issue to the attention of Council in 2007, which is seven years ago. It does seem a bit tedious and tiresome, but we seem to need to remind Council that Horsewell is growing rapidly, uh, someone said to the size of Gisborne in a few years. So provision for youth in Horsewell and other suburban areas across Christchurch is pretty, com pretty abysmal, especially when you compare it with other towns, big and small, um, around the country. As we point out in our written submission, the money to progress a youth facility in Horsell keeps falling off the list. The, uh, the area was unflagged, sorry, was flagged, unfunded in the three-year plan, but this has now entirely dropped off. And we think that funding for the youth facility needs to go in the plan. As an association, we prefer to see problems prevented. And now, as a community, we are having to deal with, at a local level, among with community volunteers, with a growth in petty vandalism that one gets with bored youth in your community. We also see too many older teenagers moving out of Christchurch to more supportive cities for their tertiary study, and this is a direct economic cost to the city. The second issue we want to uh, bring to your attention at this, um, in this opportunity is the pushing out of the cycleway project. In particular, the $209,000 originally set aside for the Horsewater City Cycleway. The first thing we want to say is that there is an alleged capacity issue in um, managing the rollout of these cycleways, but in our view, this capacity issue is actually illusory. Council can contract the work out, and we think that in this way, the city will also get the benefit of international expertise that resides in these consultancies. In fact, having such consultancies work alongside council staff would be a very good way of building council capacity. Secondly, uh, we want to focus more on the Horsewall uh, area, so integration with other Horsewall to city transport developments. As we understand it, this is part of joint work with NZTA. So four laning of Highway 75, public transport infrastructure improvements, and the cycleway to us are all part of, the single pic part of a single picture. You can't pick and choose, especially given Council's stated desire to decrease private car modal share. NZTA, from our information, shares this view. So if you end up delaying this part of the work, the cycleway part of the work, to us you actually run the risk of NZTA spending their money somewhere else there are plenty of local authorities with their hands out for NZTA money. And then what happens then is that NZTA blames Christchurch City Council for the congestion that results. Thirdly, Council has just approved an affordable housing exemplar at Meadowlands. And we, as an association, we really support that development. As well as affordable housing, Meadowlands look to take seriously the needs of pedestrians, 
cyclists and public transport users. But it's an island, and it's an island of accessibility that's going to be seriously hobbled if people can't get off that Meadowlands Island except by car. We already find this issue around Horsall. Existing subdivisions at Country Palms and Horsall West are prime examples. We think that uh, one of the great things about a people-friendly city will be the elimination of the need to own a car. If council could make it so that families could quit their car without sacrificing their children's safety, that would be a huge weight of the family budget. We also think that if you leave that cycleway to later, after Meadowlands is complete, you're going to end up with grief around land acquisition and potentially car parking as well. Interestingly, as an association, we ran a community survey last year. 41% of respondents thought cycleways the most important transport infrastructure improvement for, for Hallswell, and this was easily the top ranked response. So, if Council values community as we do, we think that you should make the uh, changes to the draft annual plan that we propose. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Phil. Thank you for coming and telling us your views. Um, one thing in terms of engagement with um, residents groups like yours is that the, the cycleways team are going to be talking to all of the community boards and it would be good if your, your, associate, your um, residents group come to, to hear that um, presentation. Yep. Um, because what you're really saying too is that within the current, um, within the current um, major cycleways routes, there's the route but on, along, for, say from Horswell on Horswell Road through to Lincoln Road is not included. Is that what you're really saying? It's no. Well, what we understand is that the route from Hallsville, which wouldn't necessarily run along Hallsville Road, the last iteration we saw is that it was actually running along Sparks Road, but the route doesn't matter. Um, our understanding is that the funding that was set aside to progress that cycleway has dropped off the, uh, from, the, the, um, from the spending over the next 12 months. That's our understanding. We can explore right? that. And, and you're welcome to come to that presentation too. Yes. And we, we also, um, during these hearings, have received um, a submission from NZTA itself, which highlighted the, um, the absence of our having um, applied for funding um, under their uh, cycleway um, program. Yeah. So um, they did indicate that they were very willing to talk to us. So there might be... I mean, the, my understanding is, is that the delay wasn't occasioned by funding, it was occasioned by capacity, but it may be that um, additional funding from an external source may be, enable us to increase capacity. So, uh, you know, I don't think that the issue is closed yet. That would be good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy. Uh, based on the facility uh, for the, uh, the young people, teenagers in the area, uh, you mentioned earlier uh, regarding to the, you know, the some facility has been unfunded in the three-year plan. Can you confirm with us whether it's a skateboard park? It has to be more than a skateboard park. I yes. think that um, one of the things, we, we ran a, uh, a survey uh, at, with Horsfall School students. This is way back in 2007. And at the time, we also engaged with the recreation planners at City Council. And one of the things that the city planners brought through, which was really important, I thought, was that you have to do more than just do you know, a bit of concrete and a few jumps and that sort of thing. It has to be um, a complete facility that balances or that, that includes the needs for both boys and girls and a, a range of, of age groups. And so I think we have to think um, a bit more deeply than just calling it a skateboard park. And so I think calling it a, um, a youth facility encompasses those, both of those aspects. Thank you. Pauline? Sorry, I had a question on page four of your submission about the um, NZTA upgrade of the Curlitz Road and Dunbar's intersection. Has that been done or is that waiting for council to do our bit first? Uh, my understanding that's waiting for you guys. Righty ho. Thank um, you. I'll just... You're supporting the integrated way council's approach right, transport, no. which includes NZTA. Oh, sorry, the... Uh, so far as I understand, it's, it's the um, Dunbar's Road to Curlitz Road is an NZTA responsibility because that's Highway 75. Yep. But um, it, has to also, it has to be done as part of an integrated whole. Right. So obviously you don't control NZTA uh, spending, 
but that is, as I understand it, well and truly up on the up on the list as far as the NZTA's okay, priorities are concerned. So you, you think they may be waiting for us to do our bit first? Or? Well, um, I don't know. I, I, the way I see these sorts of things is that the two organisations, you know, talk to each other and coordinate things, and, and yep. we're just spectators in that. Really. And part of their plan, have you seen it? It says he includes off-road cycleways. That's my understanding, and also. Um, doing a bus priority lane as part of that okay. process as well. So as we're sort of um, saying in our submission is that this is all part of an integrated whole and so you know, including off-road cycle, off cycleways is a really important part of that. Excellent. Thank you very much. That's okay. great. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, much appreciated. And it's great to see an active and um, involved community um, uh, association. So thank you. Okay, thank you.